guys, Jay here. Welcome to Eons of Battle. It's no secret that I get a kick out of old models. Many of them have appeared in videos over the eons. One of my favorites is the Rogue Trader Chaplain on Jet Bike that I kitbashed into a Primaris Ancient. And my out of production Metal Kato Sicarius won me a finalist pin at Golden Demon. I just love bringing this old stuff back onto the tabletop. It's funny to me, having a model from 1492 sitting next to a 2020 Primaris Space Marine. But in this video, I'm gonna break out all the stuff that hasn't made its way into videos yet. Starting with... Probably the most recent model for my retro collection, this old Space Marine Captain. This guy is kind of an honorary Black Templar character because the original one from the Games Workshop web store was painted in Black Templar colors. And Games Workshop agrees with me because the new generic Marshall kit that they just released for the Black Templar, you can actually recreate this exact guy. They give you the combi melta, the bear head with the rebreather mask and the fancy power axe. I just think this model is really, really neat, and I should paint it up. I think the only reason I haven't is because I collect chaplains for my Black Templar, and so whenever I'm in the mood to paint a Black Templar character, I always end up going with one of my chaplains. But my Black Templar are going to need captains too, and so I will eventually have to get this guy painted up. And hey, I, I actually do have three colors on him. He is tournament legal. But there's plenty of stuff I could do to this model. I think it'll be super fun. Moving on to more Space Marines, I have these two second edition Space Marines, and these are generics. And I have this idea in my head of one day doing a proper second or third edition Space Marine army using all like original kits. I just kind of, I, I think that Space Marines now look way better. Primaris is super cool, but there's a charm to the old Space Marines and their simplicity and their dumb Buzz Lightyear appearance and I would love to do it. I have these two guys. I have a whole bunch of the old three-piece plastic models, and I actually have a bunch of the old sprues that came with shoulder pads, the dopey, the dopey second edition arms, and the old bolters. So it's totally, it's totally in the cards, but I don't think it's, I don't think the time is right yet. Maybe one day, maybe one day it'll be time for a proper retro army. And these guys will make a really nice addition. I'll probably have to pick up a bunch more because even though I do want it to look like the time period, I want it to look like the best possible version of Marines from that time period. So I'm gonna need lots of alternate builds just so that I can have a little bit of variety with my units. But these guys are pretty crisp and clean. I mean, they have a terrible scene line running up the middle of each of them, but they're actually not terrible. And I definitely need to pick up a few more. I think I got these guys in a giant lot of other stuff. And they just happen to be really nice. And speaking of Space Marines from 2nd edition, I have this Space Marine Captain in Terminator armor. I don't remember why I picked this guy up. I think I, think I was in a Terminator mood, but then I managed to get a hold of a Inquisitor in Terminator armor, and that model was like a million times cooler than this model. But he's still fun. He actually has some sort of a gun built into his power fist. I don't know if that would be a storm bolter because he's also holding a storm bolter. Although double having two storm bolters would actually be kind of a fun loadout, especially back in the day when storm bolters were a pretty legitimate gun. It's just a bolter with a buttload of shots. It would actually be pretty sweet to have this guy just dumping dice onto the battlefield and his Terminator armor would keep him nice and protected. But back in the day when Terminators were a little derpier than they are now, I think I actually don't mind this look and I hope that when, when Space Marine Terminators get a remake from Games Workshop, and they will, and Games Workshop is gonna keep everything exactly how it is and just scale them up and give them some Primaris weapons. That's exactly what they're going to do because that's what I want and I think that Games Workshop should do everything that I want them to do. But this guy's really fun. The only I mean, there's a lot of flaws with him. He's a, a poopy looking model from second edition, but he, he is really, really badly leaning forward. I mean, this is Michael Jackson levels of leaning forward and you can't really even bend him backwards because then his toes are pointed straight up in the air. I don't know what happened with the sculpting or casting or if it just kind of looked right in the moments, but I don't know, it's wild how badly he's leaning. It's ridiculousness. And then his head is sticking so far out of his Terminator armor that if you glue this guy to a base right now, he's basically staring right at the floor. It is a very, very silly model. And this is from so long ago that his shoulder pads actually 
come down in a weird diamond point, which actually I don't think is a terrible look and would actually be kind of fun. I think that would be a really, really interesting way to actually bring a little bit of a retro aesthetic back into a Primaris world. If maybe when they revamp the Terminators, they actually, they have regular shoulder pads, but they could also have these interesting shoulder pads with the points. You see a lot of stuff like this kind of coming over from Rogue Trader when Space Marines were truly like knights in shining armor. But this model's neat. I think maybe what drew me to this model was his scabbard, which is awkwardly hanging down his front so that he couldn't possibly walk. Like his sword is gonna be kicking out in front of him with every step. But the scabbard of his power sword is completely covered in skulls and his arm just fell off. And it's kind of a fun look and they're not terribly sculpted skulls. I mean, clearly it's just, you know, some sort of a green stuff with like toothpick marks in it, but you can tell they're skulls and they're kind of fun. I would love to see something like that brought back. And he also has a Crux Terminatus on his knee pad, which is kind of fun, probably because he's a Space Marine captain. And so he has to have extra Crux Terminatuses to prove just how elite he really is. He's also quite a bit smaller than a normal Space Marine, not even a primary Space Marine, but a regular Space Marine. And speaking of regular Space Marines, I have one more retro Space Marine, and that is this Librarian. This is a first and second edition Librarian, and it's kind of cool. It's got some weird stuff going on with his proportions and the shaping of him because he's he's standing completely flat, like he's just front on, but his head is sculpted a little to the left, his body sculpted a little to the right. It's, I get the sense that they did their darndest when they sculpted these models, but sometimes when you perfect something, yeah, you, you have to leave it alone because it's like, oh, I sculpted the perfect, the perfect symbol on his chest. The only problem is it ended up kind of over here but it looks really good, so I'm not gonna mess with it anymore because I don't wanna lose a day of work. I think that's how a lot of these older models turned out. I also love just kind of the, the baseball bat kind of choking up on his sword. I mean, a lot of this has to do with they were trying to get the pieces to be as few parts as possible so that they're much easier to cast. I mean, the more parts you have, the more expensive the model gets to produce. And back in the day when they did force weapons, I feel like they were a little bit more extra with force weapons because modern force weapons, sometimes, especially like with the Grey Knights, they don't have any of this really, really fun detailing. It has a weird zigzaggy magical lightning bolt running up the entire sword and it looks sick. The last time I can remember a model like that was probably Dark Vengeance, the, the Dark Vengeance librarian. And I think the Dark Vengeance librarian, the detailing only went up, I think halfway. I totally think they should bring it back all the way. Have all force weapons be completely silly and over the top. Because why not? You have to make you have to make all your different swords different. And right now we have regular swords, and then we have power swords, which are also just regular swords, and then we have force swords, which are slowly turning into just normal swords. Give us weird, wacky swords. I also think they should bring back the weird skull with the ram's head. I don't know if this is something that I've just that has completely escaped me in the lore, but most librarian models have this symbol on them and I have no idea what it means. Why would it have ram's horns? Somebody, somebody tell me in the comments, um actually me all over the place in the comments. What is the deal with the regular skull head with horns? Because I don't get it. I think it, it's, I think it's appeared on models as, as recently as Mephiston, the new Mephiston remake. And I don't know what it means or why it exists. And I'm not a stranger to the lore, but it's just completely escaped me. The, the, the meaning of the ram's head Terminatus, or not Terminatus, um, Imperialis. Ooh, and then I have one more space, but I'm gonna save him for the last. And then moving on to some Xenos, I have not one, but two Dark Eldar Beastmasters. And I have two for double the fun. And these are weird and wacky models. They're so much fun. I, I think I got this also in a big giant job lot. And I assume that this was for Warhammer Fantasy Battles because it looks it looks a lot more Warhammer Fantasy Battles than Warhammer 40K. But when I actually took a closer look at this model, 
he has a shuriken pistol or some sort of a dark Eldar gun. And I was just I was just shocked. And I was even more shocked to discover the original chimeras. These things are whew, they are wonderful. Holy cow. They're weird, wacky, scorpion-tailed, kind of raw parthal looking DD rejects. They're so weird. And I only have two sculpts. I think there was three in total. But they're not when you when you look at the details, they're not terrible. I think the the paint job that these have, which I didn't do, I bought them painted. It doesn't it's not doing them any favors. I think with paint you could salvage them to some extent. I think you could make these guys look actually kind of interesting and frightening. But boy, I mean, what a combination. Games Workshop sells a Beastman a Beastmaster right now. And it's not bad. It kind of just looks like a regular Hellion, a regular Dark Eldar on their like um, their Green Goblin uh, fly flying skateboard thing. But this guy, this guy is something special. And the Beastmaster is due for a refresh. And I hope when it happens, I hope the refresh looks a lot more like this guy than the current sculpt. Like, what is the what was the thought process behind this? I guess maybe like bullfighters will sometime will wear like these big crazy getups. That's probably that's probably where it comes from. It's just so weird, and I love that he's wearing uh, bat wings, and he's got one fancy boot. Just an absolutely legendary model. I don't really have any plans to do a Dark Eldar army, but if when I do, this guy is definitely going to be part of it. Uh, I'm going to plunk this thing down on the table and people are going to be like, that's not a Games Workshop model. I'm going to be like, absolutely, this is a Games Workshop model. Man, and just thinking about what the Dark Elder looked like at the time. I mean, the old plastic Cabalites that look way different to how the modern ones look. This guy would look out of place next to them. <laughs> it's just so weird. But I absolutely love it. And thank goodness I have two because this guy's axe broke off. So luckily I have a spare. And of course... Of course, I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to put on the white gloves and bring bring out all the stops to paint up these beautiful, beautiful old school chimeras. And speaking of things that aren't nearly as much fun as very flamboyant Dark Aldar, I have this, which is a witch. This is a witch hunter inquisitor with inferno pistol. I really like Inquisitors. I'm trying to put together a little collection of Inquisitors, and I definitely wanted one of these gals in the army. There's actually three versions of this model. I think one has a Plasma Pistol and Power Maul, and I think another one has a Power Sword, and this one has the Inferno Pistol and Walking Stick. Which is arguably by far the worst loadout, but I actually think it's the most interesting model. Inferno Pistols are pretty rare in 40k, Hand flamers in general usually aren't that good, and I think that's probably one of the reasons why they've kind of vanished, but I really like this model. And this was back in the day when there was actually two different Inquisitor codexes. There was Inquisitor, there was Demon Hunters, and then there was Witch Hunters. I have the Demon Hunters codex, but I don't have the Witch Hunters codex, so I'll have to, I'll have to track that down so that I can get some inspiration on how to paint this lady. But it actually is a really nice model. I think... Apart from the legs, which are a little static and boring, I think this would slot really nicely into a modern 40k army. And it's kind of an old model, 2003. It's 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 showing its age really really well. It really it really stands the test of time. And the Inquisitor models from that time period are all top notch. Some really really cool stuff. And 2003, which means that this is white metal, and so it doesn't have nearly as much lead in it as some of the models. I like this model that I'll show off right now because I brought up lead. And boy oh boy, this guy, I should I should put this thing in a in a steel bag to keep myself safe from it. This is a rogue trader space marine captain. Single lumpy piece of lead. This model looks like a chewed piece of gum. I I don't even know if I can paint this. It's so bad. It's a classic Beaky from back in the day when Space Marines were actually like prisoners who had been psycho indoctrinated to be police officers. And they're pretty much still Judge Dredd. 
It is a hilarious model. He's got some sort of a plasma gun built into his fist, and then he has a power fist. It's a really weird model. His backpack is sliding down his back. Usually space frame backpacks are riding, they're riding high to the point where they sometimes they're even above the head of the model. This guy is not like that. Oh, and his face. Boy, that face. He looks a lot like Bert from Sesame Street. It is, it is not a good look. <sighs> maybe that's the challenge. That Maybe that's what this video is going to be. A challenge. Can I make a model this terrible? Can I fix it with painting? And I think it'll be the very first video where I fail. Man, is this a derpy, dopey model. But it is kind of, it does have a fun legacy. If I have to say one nice thing about it, it is uh, one of the very first Space Marine models out there. And that is fun. Boy. Boy, oh boy. <laughs> and last but not least for retro, I actually have some plastics. And these are the OG plastic Gene Stealers. I got these way back in the day for an absolute steal on eBay. They are painted with what can I, I can only assume is the toughest lacquer based paint on the planet because half of these guys have been through paint stripper and nothing came off. I, I am assuming that these were painted with probably testers enamels and then given like two coats of gloss lacquer. Holy moly. But I would love to, cause these are excellent models. Um, they, in some ways I like them a little bit better than the current gene stealers. The, the current Gene Stealers suffer a little bit from having really long arms and really long legs that all stick out in all directions away from the base, where at least these guys are fairly contained. If I put these guys on 32s, they would actually be pretty, they would actually sit pretty well on their bases. I mean, a big problem with the, with the current Gene Stealers is you try to pick one up and then they all monkey in a barrel come with, whereas these guys are not bad. And the detail on them, their faces are terrible, but I kind of like these weird exposed ribs on the back. They're not bad. I don't mind them. And I would love to maybe do a video where I retro, I, I paint these, but not in a retro way. I paint them in a grim, dark style to see if, I bet, I bet these would look really good given a nice, modern, grim, dark paint job. I think that they would slot right in with current jeans dealers. And it would give some really nice variety. I have 30 modern Gene Stealers, and I think 10 more of these retro suckers would really spice it up and look really slick. I'll definitely have to give that a try, and I'll definitely have to try out maybe a couple more paint strippers to see if anything will put a dent on the terrible, terrible paint on these guys. I mean, for the time, these look sick, but uh, I, don't, I don't really want to put them on the tabletop today. Ooh, I almost forgot to talk about this metal scarab swarm from back when necrons were barely necrons they were uh i think that they were had moved from being chaos robots into necrons but the scarab swarms were quickly replaced by the scarab swarms we know today when the plastic necron warrior kit came out but i have kept this one necron scarab swarm all these years because i would love to one day pick up a metal necron overlord either the really, really hard to get a hold of space, like Necron Warrior with cape. I don't know why, but that model is just impossible to find. Or the old Tin Man looking Necron Overlord. And I want this model to decorate the base to truly, to truly have the retro vibe going. It'll be a very, very old Necron that has basically no relationship to the current Necron aesthetic. And then his little, his little Scarab Swarm just it's like his little dog. His, you know, he's a 10 billion year old Necron and he's got his 10 billion year old dog at his feet. But that is why I have this guy. And I, one day, one day I'll have an old out of production Necron Overlord. I also have some out of production Imperial Guard. I actually had a bunch of Catachans, but I actually got those guys painted up. I have a whole bunch of Talern Desert Raiders. And these guys are actually really slick little sculpts. I really like them. The only problem is I don't quite have enough for a kill team and not nearly enough for a 40k army, which I wouldn't want to do in general. But these are really, really cool guys, especially with the popularity of Dune right now. I think these guys would paint up really, really nice. 
especially some washes. I mean, all of those lovely clothing, these guys would take washes and contrast paint beautifully. And they actually are a really, really fun aesthetic because they have these robes on, but then they also just have random pieces of flak armor and las guns. It's a really, really nice look. I totally see why Games Workshop dropped most of the different Imperial Guard factions because, I mean, it would just be really, really hard to keep like 25 different versions of the same Cadian squad, but these guys are really, really fun. And maybe if I can keep my eyes out on eBay and put together the rest of the squad, I would. it would maybe be cool to actually have a kill team of every single out of production guard faction. I mean, I've got Krieg, I've got Katachan, so maybe put together some Talern, and then some Vastroy and Firstborn, maybe some Morty and Iron Guard, some Steel Legion. I think, I think it could be a really, really cool project. I don't show the Imperial Guard enough love, mostly because they usually don't jimmy my jams, they don't flim my flams. I'm not that into the regular dudes, but I think I think it does it does become something special when they're not just regular dudes. They're the Talern Desert Raiders. They have this weird aesthetic and this weird lore to them. Man, and Forge World used to make these absolutely badass Talern Desert Raider riders where they were riding like camel hippos. I'll put up a picture, but there was there was from Forge World the, the Talern Desert Raider riders and they were riding a camel hippo. It was a really, really fun model. And it would make a really great centerpiece to a little to a little Talon Desert Raider kill team. But these guys are just fun. But that is my collection of retro stuff. I just think it's fun. I really like it. And you know what else I like? That's right, the Eons Battle Patreon. Over there, we have lots of high-quality terrain STLs, voting what models I paint live here on YouTube, some behind-the-scenes, a live hobby hangout every week, and one extra episode of Eons Battle a week. And if that's not your thing, we also have merch, linked in the description below. But that is my out of production retro collection. I can't wait to add more to it and hopefully get a little bit of it painted. Thanks for watching.